Today I am conquering Twig and Tail's Fable Dress, and like any good project, it must start with a mock-up to check for fit. Now this was pretty dead on from the size chart. The only change I decided to make was to shorten the sleeve a bit. Today I am not going to do any sort of tutorial because Twig and Tail has an amazing tutorial for this pattern. So this is more like a slow sew along with me for this hot summer weather. I also decided to make the Taylor's ham pattern that Twig and Tail has for free on their website so that I could do a better job at pressing out curves and seams going forward. Please remember that when stuffing something with fabric scraps, you are always going to need more than you think. They compact down quite a bit and you will end up with a pretty dense, slightly heavy object. So it's not an ideal stuffing for certain applications. This is going to be my first project working with a proper fusible interfacing, but I think that for modern clothing it can really help you create a nice crisp, more tailored look, and that's what I'm going for. I want to create garments that are heirloom quality that I can wear for years, and the interfacing for this really does give a great effect. So I recommend giving it a try, even if you're a little bit anxious about it. I think it's worth it. And I did want to point out all the sewing in this video is in real time. Sometimes I show you parts of the process sped up, but I decided that for the slow sewing nature of this, I wanted to show you just how slow it really can be. So this is me stay stitching around the neckline and the princess seam curve of the bodice in real time. I thought it might be fun to do a contrasting color for all of my interfacing, my pockets, as well as the sash portion of this dress since I had this lovely bright magenta fabric, about a yard of it, that kind of worked well I believe with the floral. So for the interfacing, first I had to tack it down at the corners with just the tip of the iron so it stays in place. And then I need to iron over it with a moist pressing cloth in between. So I'm just using a dish towel.
for this project, I ended up sort of Frankensteining together three different sizes. So the bodice is one size, the sleeve is a size up from that, and the skirt is two sizes up from that. So I decided to hand stitch the sleeve in just so I could have better control over easing it. And then it's time to connect our interfacing. So I'm going to stitch it right sides together first. And then once it's all attached, I'm going to press it into place, turn it into the inside of the garment, and then I will stitch over the top edge of that just to give it a really nice, smooth, clean look. The recommendation from Twig and Tail to get a crisp corner here was to clip it and then turn it inside out using something to kind of poke it through. So I daringly just use the tip of my scissors to sort of poke it through. And you can see in the next scene that it really has created a nice crisp corner. Already making use of our new tailor's ham to just get a nice press around that curved edge of that inner collar. I can use this also to press out the sort of princess seam curve at the side of the bodice. At this point I realized I forgot to put the waist ties into the side seams so I'm just popping those open with my seam ripper just enough to get the ties in place. We're gonna move on to the skirt, and the first thing I need to do is set my pockets in place and sew them onto the right side of the fabric to be turned in, and then sewn into the side seam. I found this to be the most effective method for insetting pockets, so I wanted to slow down and really show you the process in this video because I've kind of glossed over it in others, so if you are very confident in pockets, you can skip ahead a little bit. Next, I'm adding a gathering thread to the top edge of the skirt. Yes, I could do this by machine, but the truth is that my sewing machine sits in one of the hottest corners of our house. And sometimes I would rather just sit on the floor 
and hand sew a bit rather than baking in the sewing corner. Now it's time to bring these two pieces together. So I am just tucking the bodice into the skirt so I can line up the edges and gather down the skirt as much as is necessary. I sized up in the skirt for a little extra room and making that fit adjustment is very easy. I'm just gonna gather it down slightly more than the skirt would have normally been gathered down. But it's quite easy to adjust. After I attach the gathered down skirt, I can do the buttonholes on my bodice and for this I decided to use the automatic buttonhole setting on my sewing machine. And then to open them up, I have my handy little buttonhole chisel, which you can use if you're doing hand sewn buttonholes or just to open up machine ones. And since this project is about quality over speed, I decided to just go over those buttonholes again by hand just to reinforce them a little and catch any fraying bits of fabric. The buttons are recycled from the gray pleated skirt that I turned into a dress in my previous video, so no part of that project went to waste. I reused the bias tape and the fabric on the dress I made, and I'm reusing the buttons right here. At this point I could simply hem the dress, but I had this long strip of leftover fabric from cutting out my pieces and I decided to turn that into a long ruffle strip. So I cut it to six inches wide and then stitched it together. I ended up with a nice long strip a little bit more than twice the width of the skirt. Not me figuring out how to adjust my tension and basically create a ruffle effect on the fabric as I stitch it. So instead of hand gathering this, that's what I did to the ruffle piece since it's quite long. Then I just had to arrange the ruffles, gather it down a little bit more, and pin it out to the hem of my skirt. Then I could stitch it on and we'll be done. I did put a rolled hem on the edge of this ruffle as well before I gathered it down, just so that it would be nice and finished. And here it is. I think the combination of the view I choose to make, as well as the fabric, gives it a very vintage, almost like 30s and 40 vibes. It's very much like photos of my grandmother. Um, but I think that vintage retro look is back, you know, and the ruffle gives it more of a cottagecore vibe. I'm really happy with it, and I feel like it's a very good quality piece that I've made. And it's got pockets. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. Thank you especially to my wonderful patrons. And if you'd like to join their ranks, see the link below. Bye.